It's 5.02 on my laptop. So we'll begin. So if everyone wouldn't mind just muting themselves for right now, if you're not already muted, but that will just be helpful at the beginning as we kind of go through the slides. And then you are welcome to type anything into the chat if there's kind of like questions that come up as we go. Um, but then I will also out allow lots of questions um, time at the end. So um, let me switch here to my presentation mode. Whoops. All right. Okay, Shelly, can you just give me a thumbs up if you guys can see that? Awesome, fabulous. Okay, so welcome our new St. Rose families um, to our new family orientation. Um, looks a little bit different this year, just like a lot of things, but we still wanted the opportunity to just chat with you guys about just kind of preparations to get you ready for summer and get ready for the fall so you didn't feel you know, just kind of completely out of the loop. So this is just hopefully giving you some of the big things that we feel like would be helpful for families to know as you approach summer and get ready for fall. Um, and then, you know, there will be lots of communication in the fall and beyond um, as far as just stuff about St. Rose and things that are happening and going. So know that you will get that as well. So just welcome. Uh, just like we start out our staff meetings and um, the students start this out every day, we just are reminding ourselves of what our mission of our school is, which is to work in great collaboration with our parish, um, just to educate each student as the unique children that they are, um, to grow in their love and knowledge of the Catholic faith and to achieve their excellence in education. So. That is always our focus, and we are just trying to do what we can to follow that mission in every decision that we make. All right, so we're going to get started with um, first a little update um, just about principal. So um, I know that you guys have probably been receiving our emails. Um, it is with a very heavy heart um, that I step away from St. Rose. Um, I have been here since 2010 and have absolutely loved my time here. Um, and St. Rose is a perfect community with the school and church together. Um, there was just a opportunity that presented itself for my husband and I, a position down in Eugene at um, one of the two Catholic elementary schools down there. And um, their principal was retiring after 15 years. And I just felt a call to apply and received the position. And then my husband and I just needed to make the real difficult decision about what um, was just next for our family. So I will be stepping away from St. Rose at the end of this month um, and moving to, to Eugene. Um, but I have very dear and close friends in the St. Rose community, and I know that I will be up visiting um, and just having making sure that the transition is very smooth for the new principal. Um, the Just a little bit of an update on that. Um, the principal search is in process. So um, Father Matt has um, an interview team, and they are working through that process right now. That is um, all put forth by the Department of Catholic Schools. So you should be getting information soon that will give you more updates on the principal um, search. And then, like I said, I will be working with that person um, at the end of the month to make sure everything is smooth with the transition. Uh, but in the email that I said, like, it's just, I mean, the community is what makes us so strong. And I know you guys are all in fabulous hands and can't wait for you guys just to join the St. Rose family. Uh, all right. Uh, we have a transition we're also making from our um, student management system. Um, you see a picture on the screen right now of, uh, of a thing called school speak and that is normally our way that we communicate with families and we have um, announcements on there and links to re-registration and forms. Well, we also have this thing called FACS, which is our tuition management system. And um, FACS 
has a student management system. And so we felt it was in the best interest just of our whole school community to just have everything in one hub. So we are moving away from school speak after this year. And for those of you that are brand new, doesn't phase you at all because you're not using it. Um, but those of you that might have siblings um, will know that we're moving away from school speak and we're gonna have everything in facts. So all your tuition management will be through facts as well as your hub for checking student grades um, and class lists and everything like that. So you'll get information in the summer about um, creating a login and all those things that you normally would with school speak. So that's a little update about that. Um, our lunch program, we um, paused that this year due to COVID. And at this point in time, we are still on pause with that. We are really waiting for direction from the Oregon Department of Education to see what, uh, honestly, just what the rules and regulations are for eating and distance and all those things. So for right now, if you are a big planner, um, plan for cold lunches until we hear otherwise that has worked really well with our our current you know situation and the kids are eating in the classrooms um hopefully we'll get to move to the cafeteria next year but right now we're just playing best case safest scenario which would be planned for cold lunches until you hear differently um and then next is our after school program we um have a connection with champions um kinder care and they have provided our after school care for the last couple of years. And um, they have actually been doing on site um, daycare and child care all of COVID. And I have been in communications with our regional manager at Tri Champions. And we are working really hard to make after school care a possibility for next year. So um, that should be happening. And you'll just hear more information about that as we kind of finalize things. So after school care should be able to occur and um, lunch program right now is on pause. All right, um, office procedures, just a little bit about, whoops, sorry, um, just kind of the big stuff. There's gonna be lots more information, but we don't wanna get you too overwhelmed. Uh, we want to make sure safety is our number one priority. So it is best practice for us if you call or email if your child is sick and not going to be at school. We have um, teachers that take attendance every morning. And so we just want to make sure that if your child is not here, we know that it's because we've heard from you. And if not, our office um, secretary, Mrs. Randazzo, will call. So an email or a call to the secretary as well as the homeroom teacher um, is great. And then we just make sure everybody's accounted for. Um, we are currently doing health checks for all visitors and students. So right now that's, for all we know, that's what we'll continue to do. And so we'll be take, we take temperatures of the students as they come to the campus and um, also do some just health screening questions about how they're feeling, if they're feeling sick um, those kind of questions. And then we also do that for all of our visitors. So for right now, we'll just keep that going and we'll see if um, anything changes, but that will be what we'll continue. Um, and kind of the same thing with masks. I have no idea what the regulations and policies are gonna be from Oregon Department of Education next year for masks. So we will just be looking for that information from them in the summer and we will get that information to you guys as soon as we know. Uh, Medications, we do have um, medication training on staff. And so if your child needs to have like um, an inhaler or needs to take certain medication during the day, um, you can talk to Mrs. Randazzo in the office and there's paperwork just to fill out and we can have that stuff on site and we can make sure that um, whatever needs to be administered um, is there. So medications is just an important one to talk to with your classroom teacher and Mrs. Randazzo if that um, is something that you need. Um, share hours and volunteering is another one. That one is something we have so desperately just longed for um, this year because that's really what makes our community so special is just everybody coming together and doing things together. So we are really hoping that things will start to continue to get better and next year we'll be able to have more opportunities for volunteering. Um, we do have share hour requirements, which I have shared with um, all of you just in our one on one conversations, but that's 30 hours as a family and 15 hours if you're in a single household 
Um, we will be very, very um, flexible and patient given whatever the circumstances are for if we can have volunteering. So right now it's been waived for our current families because they can't come and volunteer. So just know that we'll be in contact with you guys for that. Um, and then we do have with volunteering, we do have background checks we have to do if you're working with children and um, a safe environment training also. So we will just keep you guys updated with information on when those trainings are. Um, there's a few that can be in person or online and we'll just um, be on the lookout for information coming from Mrs. Randesco. Uh, all right, next up. So something that will be coming home to you um, in the month of June. So towards the end of June, we'll get in contact with you. You'll get an email from Mrs. Rendazzo sharing that we have some things to hand off to you before, you know, a summer officially kickstarts. Um, we have a calendar, a printed calendar, um, like you'll see in the example picture that just kind of gives you the no school days, half days, um, just kind of the big stuff, parent teacher conferences. Um, so we'll provide you with a hard copy of that. We will also provide, um, we use some funding that we received from the state to purchase these summer bridge activity books. Um, and we purchase them for all of our students, um, as well as our new incoming students. So if your child is currently in first grade, getting ready to go to second grade, there is a first grade to second grade summer book, and you'll receive a little workbook. And that can just, it is not mandatory by any means. It's just a, a resource that families can use if they want their kids to kind of be doing some things um, over the summer. Um, that are not things like tutoring, but just kind of a workbook that you could just kind of schedule, you know, throughout the days that you want to do. So that will be coming home. And then we also will have a copy of our school supply list. So you'll know what your child um, needs for their class. And then we also have a really handy um, handout called what every family should know that just kind of has um, basic things like um, office procedures, things like that. That's just a nice little piece of paper to have just to glance at. So uh, Mrs. Randazzo will email and just say, you know, we have all of these items and she'll kind of give you a time frame, and we'll just ask if you can just swing by school during that time frame, and she'll just hand it off um, for you and your family to just kind of get ready for the fall. Um, this is our very beautiful drop off and pick up procedure map. Um, we realized that like this is really important to share with our new families because uh, with us being in distance learning for so long, our new new families this year really had no idea what was going on with how to drop kids off. And we wanna be really, really good neighbors and we have a lot of neighbors around our area. And so um, this is the flow of traffic that makes it easiest for our neighbors to get in and out and for just not a, a backlog of cars. So we do, if you'll notice this exit area, we do have only one direction you need to turn right. And that's just because the street is very small anyways and having traffic come on both sides is a lot. And then we get a very long backup line off of uh, 53rd. So that you can also park anywhere um, around the school and you can also just walk onto the playground as well. And the students all stand um, in um, nice lines. They have a kindergarten line, a first grade line. They'll, they kind of have a certain spot and you'll see that with um, chalk, but um, they, their teacher will be out there and they'll just come outside. And then this covered area will be perfect for when it's rainy or snowy and um, the kids will be under the covered structure. So um, the other thing just to make note of for the drop off and pick up is that we do have a lot of neighbors on this area um, that sometimes have difficult getting out of their houses during our high volume pick up and drop off time. So just be conscientious of um, the neighbors around and, and doing your best to, to be good neighbors because you know they live in a very great neighborhood with the school, but we also wanna make sure they can get out when they need to. So it's a little bit about drop off. Um, the only time that you'll ever, ever come to the front of the school for drop off or pick up is if you're getting your child early like um, from school because maybe they have an appointment and they need to leave early 
or if your child is tardy to school and coming in late, then you will go to the front door and buzz the doorbell and we'll let you guys in that way. Um, uniforms. Uh, so uniforms, we have very cute, snazzy uniforms that all the kiddos wear. Uh, we do have a uniform closet, um, which has some gently used items. We are not really sure what that looks like right now as far as available um, pieces for new families. So we will see what our current families bring back um, in the next couple weeks. And then we will go through things and see if they are worthy of being handed off. And then um, we have normally had a parent um, just volunteer group that has done a few um, uniform exchange opportunities in late August. But I would say that your best bet um, just for information from me is do not wait for that. Um, the sizes are really across the board. Um, so it would be really best for you to order some staple items for your child in early summer. And our vendors are Dennis Uniform, um, Land's End. And then we do have more details about that on our St. Rose PDX um, website. So you can look for more information on that. Uh, but they have our, all of our information of what they, we can and cannot wear. So that's also very helpful. All right, I promise I'm getting close to the end and then I know there's lots of questions. Uh, Pre-K and kindergarten roundup. I mentioned to some of you that have pre-K and kindergarten students that we were going to try to do a roundup um, just with some staffing changes um, and then with just the logistics of COVID and safety and um, it's gonna be not what we want it to be if we tried to rush and do it in the next couple of weeks. So instead, we decided we're going to just do it um, the week before school starts for our pre-kindergarten and kindergarten students. Um, and we have a supply drop-off day that's actually for everybody, um, the whole school. But we are going to um, specifically ask that if you are in pre-K and kindergarten that you try to come between 11 and noon, or sorry, come at 11. Um, and your child will get to be there for about an hour with the teacher and get to do some activities and meet their classroom excuse me, meet their classmates, see the classroom, and then you would come back and pick them up at noon. Um, we will go into more detail about this as it gets closer, but that's just something to make note of that we will not be doing an earlier roundup. We're gonna move it to September. And then uh, grades pre-K to eight, and then all of our specialists, you guys will all receive a video, a welcome video from teachers um, by July 1st. So um, your students can anticipate um, seeing, you know, who their teacher is and getting a little welcome from them because I know that's important. And for all of you that had students that shadowed, um, you guys met the teacher that they're not actually going to have. So this is important for you to just get to see their faces and have them wish you guys all a happy summer and just share excitement about seeing you in the fall. So that's something to just keep on your radar. Uh, and then fundraising is the last part of our presentation here. Uh, we do have a fundraising commitment of $500 for each family, which um, I have shared with people. Um, again, we'll see kind of what happens with COVID um, and what things can happen. We did do a really successful jogathon this year, and we did do a spring virtual fundraiser. We did not do wreath and poinsettias due to COVID. And so we'll just kind of be seeing what um, next year looks like and what um, we can continue to do. So we also just really want families to know that if you know you have particular um, financial, financial difficulties to really, really let the new principal know or even our office manager, um, um, business manager Ann McCoy, because we really want to support and help you with that. So please don't think of this as a burden. Um, this just this fundraising helps to continue programs at our school, but we really want to support families if this is um, going to be a problem. And then um, also just a reminder that it's also just a great opportunity for community building, kind of getting you in there um, to meet people because that's sometimes nerve wracking for people, but this just kind of gets you in there and gets you to start to meet some of the great community that you'll learn to love very quickly. And then it's also an opportunity to get your share hours and share hours can also 
um, be done on field trips um, and things like that. And we'll give you lots of information on that. Okay, questions. I'm gonna stop sharing so that I can see people. Um, so hang tight. All right, there we go. Um, so I am happy now to take any questions. Um, I will just say with the, the preface a little bit that we don't have our um, the most recent um, Ready School Safe Learners information out for what next year looks like. So I don't have a ton of new information about what the fall will, will look like. At this point, we have great safety protocols in place right now, and we are ready to just keep those going. Um, but as things adjust in that very large Oregon Department of Education document, we will adjust. So uh, that's just kind of the information I have uh, with that. So I'm happy to take any questions and you can put them in the chat if you don't want to talk out loud. Um, and yeah. And if I answered everything, I totally get it too, but do not be shy if you have, yes, go ahead. I have a question. Um, I have a little girl who's going to be in pre-K and she's feeling a little nervous about going to a new school. And so I was wondering if, um, because the ground up will be so late, if we'll have like a family list or I would love if she could even just meet like one other pre-K kid. So I could be like, you're going to school with that kid. <laughs> well, it looks like Coletta's ready to meet another family too. Yes. Okay. Part of, part of the, um, part of the facts school-wide management system allows you to see um, other families in your child's grade. So um, as much information as you want to put on there, like emails and cell phone numbers, um, it's, it's totally up to each person, whatever comfort level, but then you can easily reach out. Um, and I know that our pre-K teacher specifically has just seen how difficult it was at the beginning of the year because everybody had to isolate so much. And so their kids just didn't get opportunities to talk with each other. So uh, I love that idea. And I'm sure uh, everybody would love that. Oh, and a perfect reminder from one of our current families, uh, you guys will all be getting um, a mentor family. And we are trying our best to match you up with someone kind of in the grade that you're in, but you know, there's a lot of logistics, so it might not be perfect, but uh, you will get a mentor family. And that mentor family is someone that will be um, in contact with you over the summer. And it will be a perfect person for you to ask some questions over the summer. Um, and then if you do have similar aged children, um, you know, setting up some play dates and opportunities for that would be awesome too. Um, all right, we got two questions in the chat and then I'll go back to any questions. Um, the principal um, information will be going out this week as far as if there's new updates. Right now the search um, is happening. So um, there's an interview team and they're following the Department of Catholic Schools um, principal search process. And um, so they are in the middle of that and you guys should be getting information soon on um, the new principal. And then the other staffing changes, uh, we did, because I don't know if this has been shared yet. So, oh, go ahead, Shelly. I was just going to say there'll be a consolidated list going out tomorrow with um, the other updates. But if you need to. Yes. So Shelly is our marketing and communication director. We're trying not to give you emails like every two days. So <laughs> we're trying to consolidate. So you will get an email, like she said, tomorrow that will just give the most recent staffing um, changes and just kind of what's going on because we do have some exciting things that are happening. And so that information will be there. Um, if you are not able to attend the, the roundup or even the supply drop-off day, um, you will get to see the teacher on the video that they make and the video that they make will have a little bit of the classroom in it. Um, so that'll probably be the next best step. But if you aren't able to attend the supply drop off, um, then the next opportunity will be on the first day of school. And uh, so that's kind of the direction with that. And there has been a new fourth grade teacher selected. And so that information will be in that um, information to you guys. I'm sorry, I have another question. No, totally fine. Um, 
if your kiddo is um, like scared or shy about getting out of the car when you're doing the drop off, is there a place to pull over or what's the protocol there? Yeah, we would suggest our, we have our pre-K teacher and aid, especially with that age level on site right at the beginning to go and kind of welcome. Um, but we can just have you pull to the front and of the school. And if you, if you need a few extra minutes and you want uh, someone else to come out to the front, we can help with all of that. I have a question. Um, so I know that St. Rose has been lucky enough to be in person full days, full time for the last couple of months, but the kiddos who are coming from public school where they've just been hybrid, um, is there gonna be anything special you do to help those kids kind of catch up to the level of the St. Rose students? Yeah, so in the fall, right when they um, attend, um, everybody will do some really, I don't want to use the word intense, but we'll do very intentional assessments with the students to see where they are at in just kind of the ranges, specifically reading, writing, and math. And then uh, all the teachers then at that point will get together and just work as a team to figure out like, hey, what areas of weakness and, and strengths am I seeing? Our full-time um, learning specialist is going back to full-time learning specialist. She was the one who was being our Band-Aid fourth grade teacher for a year. So her job will be really to support um, all those levels of learners. And then we also hired a uh, reading specialist, a part-time reading specialist. So she will also be included in that to support that. So there will be lots of stuff done after that kind of initial uh, data is gathered to really see where um, students are and to provide that support. And no matter what, they're all differentiating just constantly in, in the class and the lessons. And so they'll continue to do that and do level grouping as needed. Um, but to really figure out where the true dynamics of the class is will be really important just to get right off the get go when they start in September. Thank you. And then one quick other question to follow up. Are there EAs in each of the classes? Have we hit the maximum class size to where they get EAs? So your EA is instructional assistant IA, right? Sorry, yes. I just wanted yes. to make sure I was talking the same lingo. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, we, we do have um, instructional assistants that are right now um, set to be in pre-K, kinder, first, um, our second grade is small or is smaller at this point in time. And then our third and fourth grade are a little bit bigger. So we have one also for them and then uh, one that's going to split. And then we also are looking at more uh, middle school support too, because we also have a lot of middle school teachers. So we'll work to support that part as well. Thank you. And if you want to specific it, tuition payments, um, it kind of depends on what you chose on your enrollment contract. Um, but if you would like to, I'm going to put in our business manager's information, um, email. Actually, Shelly, would you mind doing that? Would you put in Ann's email? If you have any tuition payment questions, you can reach out to Ann McCoy in the office specifically, and she'll help you with that. And she is in the office Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So just a note that she'll get back to you on Friday since it's already almost Thursday. Any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Um. We're just looking at a uniform policy online, and um, it looks like everything needs to be ordered through Dennis or Lance, and, but it didn't make a specific call out for pants and shorts. So I just wanted to double check that, could those be ordered elsewhere, or do those also need to go through Dennis or Lance End? Great question. Those, those are, are also through Dennis and Lance End. Um, I don't have specifics right now on my mind about classes as far as class sizes. I'm really sorry. I don't don't remember, but uh, we will see about figuring out if there's a way to just kind of share with families as we get closer to the end of the year um, what numbers are 
Uh, summer is always an interesting time to just see ebbs and flows of class numbers and if people are moving and things like that. So right now it's kind of a moving target. Uh, but we will keep everybody updated um, as things kind of finalize with numbers. <gasps> Do you have a question? No, okay. <laughs> Own basketballs. Okay. I guess he does have a question. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Do, do we have to bring our own basketballs? Great question. You know what? We have basketballs at school that you will get to use. Great. Thank you. Thanks. You're very welcome. Yes, go ahead. Um, not having come through the drop-off uh, process yet, is there? how long does it typically take to get through that line and back out? That is an awesome question. I've never been asked that. Um, I would say, and actually Shelly, you might be a better one because you drive actually through it as a parent, but I mean, I would think maybe, may, I, don't, I don't, I was going to say maybe six minutes, but I don't know, Shelly, is that, am I off? It could be a little bit longer. Sometimes I would plan for 10 minutes, maybe just if you're on your way to work, because you just don't know where you'll be at in the queue, but, um, but yeah, obviously no, no longer than 15 because that's our start time for school. So we try to have everybody through in 15 minutes, but 10 minutes is probably a good buffer. <laughs> and you might, you know, I, I, I know a lot of parents tend to walk their kids the first couple of days of school. And so then it might go really fast and you're like, oh, I'm a drive person, but no, everybody was walking. And then as the weather gets a little bit not as great and the rain it's a little harder to get the kids in a little faster so the the winter months might be a tad bit longer uh but yeah shelly's right we do have like a 15 minute window when we close the gates and we're always pretty much right on target with that Anything else that you guys are wondering about? Christine, there's just one more question about uh, oh. the time for drop off and pick up. Oh, sorry, thank you. Yeah. Um, so we open the gate at uh, between 7.40 and 7.45, and then um, we close the gate at eight. So that's the, the first window of getting dropped off. We have opened it earlier this year, because of COVID and because of how much longer it has taken just to do the temperature checks. And the, um, so we'll have to see if we still have to do those things. Um, and then at the end of the day, it's open about 10 minutes before dismissal officially is, and then it stays about 10 to 12 minutes after. And then if your child is not picked up, um, we do have, um, it, after school care, like I mentioned at Champions. And so they do just go down to Champions um, because we don't have on-site supervisors um, because teachers have to go off to committees and meetings. And so if your child isn't picked up by the time the gates close, they'll just be taken down to the cafeteria where Champions will begin. And you can just come to the front door uh, to pick up your kid. And what and, time is that pickup? Um, so we, the, we end the day at three. Um, most days, except for Tuesday, Wednesdays, we end at 2.15. And then we had the same drop off, excuse me, drop off and pick up for pre-K. So the whole entire school exits at the same time. Um, and then um, I wish I knew how many kids are new in fourth grade, but I don't, I'm sorry. Um, and then the early release day is Wednesday at 2.15. Yes, and the calendar says that, so thank you, Shelly. And middle schoolers, yes. So actually, if we have permission from parents um, to be a, a biker, a walker, or a scooter home, um, as long as you give that in an email in, to our secretary and the teachers that your child has permission to bike, scooter, or walk home, they are welcome to. 
And what they will do is they will come out with the entire class. And then we have a particular moment where a teacher just kind of yells, bikers, scooters, walkers, you may go, and then they can exit out the walking gates. All right, any other questions? These are some really great questions. Um, so we have our our playground. Um, our playground is our playground is closed while cars are on it, so nobody is able to use the playground while cars are driving. Um, so that would include the shooting hoops and playing on the basketball court. Um, we would have to have trying to think of the best way to say what how we would need to know that your child could stay to play like hoops like it would probably have to be like they we knew they were a biker or a walker um, or somehow you were in communication with the teacher saying like they have permission to stay after um, because we do have that space open once cars are gone uh, but we haven't really had anybody just immediately stay after to shoot hoops so that's awesome but uh I would just say reach out to the the office and the the classroom teacher and we make sure that that can get worked out. Okay, I'm going to go back to the chats here. Um, so with the current OHA three feet between students rule with all will all the classrooms fit the students next year uh, at this time, yes. We can all fit. The biggest thing we have to um, really be aware of is that the rules have been, it has to be six feet when you're eating. And so that's been the, the caveat for the classrooms. If they're needing to eat in their classroom, we need to make sure that they have the correct distance. So some of our larger classes currently are like moving to different spaces for their lunches, um, the cafeteria or the gym, or using the outside area because it's been so beautiful and nice, the courtyard and things like that. So that will just have to be continuing to looked at, be looked at if the six feet for eating with masks off is still something. Um, and then, yes, right now we are having pre-K wear masks all day, just like um, the rest of everybody. Um, we just kind of made the, the plan that it was like, once you hit five years and we just had so many kids that were gonna be hitting five years, um, old at different times and some super quick and it was just easier to get everybody on the right track and have masks so that's been awesome they pre-k has been doing fantastic with that all right any other questions Um, if you do 30 hours of volunteer for another Catholic school, do you have to do it for St. Rose as well? Yes. Okay. Even if you have a kid in pre-K? Yes. Our pre-K is honestly just like at all the rest of the grades. So it all falls the same, same rules. Yeah. Good question. Um, currently, we don't have anything that like our school necessarily um, plans as far as dances for middle schools. Um, I do know that CYO, which is our Catholic youth organization um, that does all of our sports, that they um, host things and we have, we, our students are invited to those things. So they have the opportunity to do things through that. But St. Rose itself, does not uh, have like a particular dance that we host. Uh, yeah. Um, a part of our summer information that will go to you guys is that summer bridge workbook um, that we have purchased for all of our families. And then you'll also uh, be able to access um, something that each teacher creates with um, summer things to do that will prepare also 
and to keep summer learning happening. Um, so that's also a resource that you guys will get um, as well. Masks um, do not have to be uniform color. Awesome question. Uh, we just have that they actually have to be masks. We don't do the bandana type things, um, but we just do the masks. Um, but we give information for that, but you can do whatever age, well, school appropriate mask. Uh, but yes, you can, it does not have to be uniform. Um, yes, so peanuts are allowed in lunches. We have um, just very safe protocols we follow if there are children in certain classes that have allergies. Um, so like, for instance, in the cafeteria, we have a, uh, like a nut free table. Um, if there's people that have high, high allergies and things like that. So once we kind of know the dynamics of each class and what allergies might be present, then we are very, very safe in figuring out and making sure that, um, uh, you know, kids are safely distanced if they have a nut allergy from somebody who maybe has peanuts in their class or, or class lunch. Um, so yeah. Awesome, we have a volunteer for school social dance. Um, signing up for CYO activities. I There sh isn't anything right now out as far as signing up currently, but um, that will be something that you would find like on our, um, our school-wide management system um, facts. We have, we'll have a CYO kind of link and you can find that information for when sports are starting to, to open up and activities to sign up for, as well as like Muse Band is another connection we have for if your child wants to play an instrument. Um, Shelly, do you have something to tag on that? Yeah, I was just gonna add that the St. Rose Parents page on Facebook is another good place to look for the activities. The CYO Athletics Director for St. Rose will usually post things as they come up on the, the parents page. so. A little extra push there. Awesome. Anything else? Like I said, you'll be getting lots of communication from us um, just as things, honestly, as things <laughs> get told to us, then we communicate to you guys. So we're kind of at a holding period as we wait to figure out what the new stuff is for next year. Um, the, I think the most helpful thing I can tell you as far as just the month of July is that normally that's when um, the administrators take most of their vacation, as much of their vacation as they can as they lead up for the, the school year. So you'll hear from the new um, principal for sure, but just also know that the, the office itself is mostly closed for the month of July. And so any um, really important matters you wanna get to, uh, to the principal or to uh, the business manager, you'll wanna do that as we near the end of June. And then um, the office will be back open in August. Um, people will be checking things off and on, but you just won't get as fast of a response um, as you would like right now. Uh, and great question. There is no nap in kindergarten. There is a rest time where they just do a little bit more mellow activities like puzzles and reading and, and, and quiet time coloring, but not official naps. We will have the first week of school for pre-K and kindergarten. You'll see this on the calendar, um, but the first week for pre-kindergarten pre and kindergarten is half days um, to establish just kind of working their stamina up as you know, they get back into the swing of school. So look for that on the calendar for pre-K and kindergarten. Uh, there is not a specific shoe that you have to wear. The biggest thing we ask is that it's a, uh, it is that it's shoes that are safe for recess and PE. So High heels would not be a great one. No sandals for open toes so that um, in case, um, you know, a ball gets dropped on your foot or something like that. But so just uh, shoes that are great for PE and recess.
great question. Shelly, do you want to take that one? Yeah, sure. Um, the question was, I'm not on Facebook. Is everything that is posted there also posted on the St. Rose website? And Facebook is definitely just an extra push for, for certain things, mainly events and things like that. But everything is typically first posted on the student information system website, which will now be fax or via email, things like that. Email and and facts will be our first point of communication. And then there are some smaller supporting things like social media just to get things kind of ramped up a little bit. So yeah, you do not have to be on Facebook to get all the information you need. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I will be respectful of your evening time, which is precious with kids and to relax and hopefully stay cool. Um, but I do just want to say, I mean, I have I got the pleasure of meeting each of you individually, and um, that meant a lot to me. And it was very weird to then announce and be like, oh, all these great people I met, and you know. So just know that. I truly believe you are in fantastic hands. St. Rose is amazing. It's going, I'm going to cry, but it's going to be um, very tough to leave. And um, I'm not leaving because I'm upset for sure. I'm very excited to see all the great things that St. Rose continues to do. And um, like I said, I will be up visiting. My sister-in-law teaches at the school. My nephews go to the school. Um, and so you guys are in amazing hands and I just wish you all the very, very best. And I will kind of be your go-to person um, for the rest of the month, um, just with questions um, that you guys have. And then uh, I will make sure that the new person um, has lots of information and feels very successful to just take over and continue to make everything smooth. So I just, I appreciate you all. I loved meeting you all. And I really do wish you guys all the very, very best. Um, and we will hopefully our paths will cross again somehow. So thank you guys for joining. Have a wonderful afternoon. Have a great summer and take care.